Alright guys, my name is Meta Goblin, and today is making a very quick video basically giving you a lot of updated information specifically for Rogue. So a lot of the theory crafting and the calculations for private servers have been totally wrong to what it actually is in the current state of Classic WoW, particularly the hit cap, the glancing blow soft cap, and even all the pre-read best in slot lists. So in this video I'm going to clear up all this um, information that I've just, you know, found out. By the way, I found this information mainly from the Classic WoW Rogue Discord, so I'd recommend going on there because it's a good resource. So basically there's just a lot of information that's like totally debunked all the old information and I'm going to tell you everything you need to know. You know, your hit cap, your pre-read best in slot, your glancing blow and everything you need to know, even, even talent build slightly as well. All up-to-date information in this video. So first of all, let's clear up what the hit cap is for rogues. A lot of people have theorycrafted in the past that it was 9% for your yellow attacks. But because of you know new theorycrafting, new testing, new mathematics, it is in fact 6%. And obviously you already get 5% from your talents, which means you literally only need 1% from your gear. Which means you can just deal with having the... Is it a blackstone ring or the pain weaver? No, pa blackstone ring. You can just have the blackstone ring, 1% hit, or black crow crossbow... And that's it, that's you done, that's you hit capped. So let me explain why this is the case. It is kind of complicated to understand, but nonetheless, let me read this from the Classic Wild Discord for rogues. When fighting a level 63 mob, all bosses known in Classic Wild, hit cap is effectively 9% for yellow swings. This is due to the boss's defense skill of 315 and your weapon skill of 300. The delta change between the boss's defense and your weapon skill is 15, and this adds a 1% hit modifier. If your weapon skill is 305, the delta between weapon skill and defense is gone, and the hit modifier is no longer in place, making yellow hit cap 8%. In addition to 305 skill negating the hit modifier, it is also determined that it gives you 2% extra hit, making yellow cap 6%, okay? Considering nearly all rogues should be picking up precision in the combat talent tree for PvE, this means that the hit needed from gear to yellow cap is effectively 1%. Okay? So that's it. That is basically how it explain, uh, you know, how it works out. You don't need to think about it too much, guys. Basically, with shorthand, you only need 1% hit from your gear. Okay, this consequently means that the pre-raid best in slot gear is totally, totally different. Okay, you no longer have to get angry about losing rolls on True Strike's shoulders. You do not need True, true Strike... True, can't say it. My voice is totally gone there. True Strike shoulders. You cannot... You don't. You just don't need it. You don't need True Strike shoulders because, you know, you don't need that. Is it 2% hit on True Strike shoulders? You don't need... You don't even need 2% hit. You don't need a DS set bonus from Devil Saw. It does turn out that Devil Saw is actually better. Still pre-read best in slot anyway. So don't worry about the fact that you bought Devil Saw. It is still best in slot just simply because of the raw DPS that it provides. But because we don't need as much hit rating, it means we can get more crit pieces and more raw attack power pieces. So let me show you my preferred best in slot pieces. My best, you know, my basically my best in slot lists. I've got three here for you, and there's a number of reasons for that, okay? As you can see here, I have a six piece Shadowcraft set. A lot of people are saying from their tests that the six piece bonus from the Shadowcraft set, chance on melee hit to restore 35 energy, actually ends up providing the most possible DPS from pre red gear. So this is actually quite interesting. The, the energy you get, you know, it procs quite often and it's really nice. So apparently this is the most DPS you can get before you step foot into a raid. However, obviously one, it's quite hard to farm Shadowcraft gear. And two, you are going to re be replacing Shadowcraft pieces with Epic gear. So on, what but I'd basically recommend is, yeah, fair enough, if you get Shadowcraft pieces, keep them in your bag. And when you get six pieces, if you've got put six pieces together, then go for it. But the thing is, you're going to be doing raids. And you're going to be getting epic gear, which means you're going to be replacing particular pieces of a Shadowcraft set, which means you're going to break the set bonus, okay? Which means you kind of need a backup, right? You need a backup in case you're going to break the set bonus by getting, you know, much better gear like Tier 2 gear or even Tier 1, obviously Tier 1 gear, which means you kind of need a backup. So oh, by all means, get a Shadowcraft set, right, because it's going to give you that awesome DPS. And fair enough, if you get l unlucky with loot, for you know a good month, then the, for a good month, then Shadowcraft is going to be very useful to you. But always have a backup, and this is my backup list. I'd recommend farming these pieces as well because if you stack all these pieces together, they're going to provide the most raw DPS that you can possibly get without Shadowcraft gear. So when you start replacing you know the Shadowcraft pieces 
with this set then obviously you can you need like a backup for your shadowcraft set because you're not going to no longer benefit from getting shadowcraft because you don't have that six piece bonus which means you can basically have these these items here can swap the shadowcraft pieces to provide extra dps when the shadowcraft without the set bonus hopefully that makes sense so this uh this set here it stacks a lot of attack power and it stacks a lot of crit crit chance as well and it is ridiculously good and you get the one percent hit from your blackstone ring jobs are good in. however you can actually get more attack power than this set if you stack four pieces of shadowcraft in the shoulder boots braces and and belt so technically you do, do get slightly more attack power if you look if you compare these you get about I think I calculated it as 27 and more extra, or 25 extra attack power. Yeah, 25 extra attack power with the four set bonus. So if you have the four set bonus, again, it is slightly better than having not having a set bonus. However, like I mentioned before, you may be replacing Shadowcraft pieces with Epic Gear. So again, always farm the backup gear as well. So that's what I'd recommend. Like my overall recommendation is obviously farm Shadowcraft gear but also farm these backup pieces in case you're going to re be replacing Shadowcraft pieces with Epic Gear. And that is pretty much covers the hit cap and the pre-raid best in slot gear. Let's move on to talking about Glancing Blows because we need to c cover this uh, you know, quickly. So the next thing to talk about is Glancing Blows. Pretty straightforward. The original perceived cap or the soft cap for Glancing Blows was 310 weapon skill. So that would be your human racial, 5 points on the mace or swords, and then also an extra 5 points from weapon expertise. But this is no longer the case. The soft cap is actually 308. So unfortunately, you know, if you're not playing a human, then you still kind of probably should get weapon expertise talent maxed, you know, the 2 points in weapon expertise. But I look, I'm actually in a server queue at the moment, so what I'll do is um, I'll put my spec on the background right now. As you can see by my spec, I'm playing a human, so I've only put one point in weapon expertise. So I can save that point and put it in. Rather than getting two points in improved eviscerate, I've, I can put three points in improved eviscerate. So that's an extra 5% damage on eviscerate, rather than getting an, a, a, that extra point in weapon expertise, which I literally do not need, because if you add three points of weapon skill from weapon expertise to the human ratio, which is five, you get eight. And there you go, Bob's your uncle, I'm glancing blow soft caps by only having one point in weapon expertise. So you no longer have to put two points of weapon expertise. It is literally pointless if you're playing human. So this means you just take that point and put it in improved um, eviscerate. Or if you put it in murder, and then one point in improved eviscerate, obviously that's up to you. However, my personal recommendation would be to stack out improved eviscerate because a lot of the mobs in, obviously, Molten Core are elemental so that's what my personal preference that's why i don't go for murder i might go for murder in blackwing lair i might swap it around a little bit but for now i prefer to put it in improved eviscerate but anyway guys that is all the up-to-date information i had to give you today and that's where i'm gonna end the video so my name is a meta goblin to my next video ciao and just before jumping guys please do give me a quick follow on twitch I'm streaming on my rogue over there pretty regularly now and I'm doing a lot of raids and stuff like that so look forward to that. And if I get 50, 20 subs on my Twitch I am doing 100 press ups um, live on camera so that's another thing to look forward to.